Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. The week is beginning. I hope that you are mentally prepared, and frankly, I hope you're spiritually prepared. We have another week, Lord willing, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, to grow in grace and knowledge about Him. And hopefully, this program will help in that process. Right now, my Bible sits open to 2 Peter and chapter 2. 2 Peter 2, we're beginning to get our toes into the second chapter here as we're doing a verse-by-verse study in the book of 2 Peter. So if you can, get your Bible open, 2 Peter chapter 2. Get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got a list of five things I would love for you to jot down today, along with having the notes there to jot down uh, the notes that I will give. You'll be able to put down on that piece of paper our contact information so that I can send you a free gift of gospel tracts. I'll speak more about that here in just a moment, but I'm going to lead into the broadcast and study time this way. You have heard this question, I'm sure, many times. Somebody comes up and they ask you, are you a glass half full kind of a person or a glass half empty kind of a person? Now, as long as there are going to be people, you and I are going to be looking for simple, quick ways by which we can categorize each other. Whether that's good or bad, I'll let you decide that. But just in case you don't already know, A glass half empty person is a person we call a negative minded or kind of person. But a glass half full person is a positive kind of person. Now, there's always going to be negative people. These people expect to find problems. And sure enough, as they go through life, they find their problems. Whenever a negative sort of person finds somebody or something that's good and honorable, they're almost shocked. Well, conversely, there's always going to be positive-minded, positively bent people. These people expect to find events and find people that are good and honorable. And lo and behold, they find them. When a positive-minded person meets somebody who lies to them or cheats them, they're, well, they're really heartbroken and disappointed. For sake of openness here, you need to know that I am a positive person kind of guy. That's my mindset. But people like me need to be warned not to believe everything that I hear and not every Bible teacher that's out there. Here in 2 Peter 2, Peter warns guys like me that there are dangerous false teachers in our world. So get your Bible. We're going to learn about people we need to look out for today. I've got a gospel tract here in front of me. I want to encourage you to get from us. Now, I hope you know what a gospel tract is. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And I'm going going to do something really offbeat today. I have a Christmas tract in my hand. It's entitled Christmas Characters. Why in the middle of August am I talking about Christmas? Well, Frankly, if you work with kiddos at your church, if you have a youth program, sometimes the best time to talk about Christmas is not at Christmas time because children particularly get their minds and hearts so bent over backwards about gifts and all the things that go with Christmas that their peanut butter brains are not really ready to receive the information they need to hear. Getting the Christmas story told them at an off 
Christmas time, I find their minds far more ready to receive it. Now, this gospel tract, Christmas Characters, talks about the key characters who play a role in the Christmas story and why they were so unusable, but God used them. Friend, this is going to lay out the gospel, but it's also going to say, no matter how unusable you think you are for God, God will use you if you let him, you put yourself at his disposal. Christmas characters. At the end of this program, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can contact us. If you do that, give us your name, give us your address. We will send to you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our gospel tracks. If your Bible's open there to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 begins this way, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Stop, please, right there. Now, all of chapter two is a warning about false religious teachers. And my goal today is simply to lay down an overview about what we're going to find as we walk through these verses. You're going to hear me use the word apostate in the study of chapter 2, and I'm going to need to define that word a couple of times along the way because not everybody hears every broadcast. But when I use the word apostate, I'm referring to a religious teacher with two basic traits. Number one, they teach false doctrine. But number two, they know what true doctrine is, but they willfully reject it. These are people who believe wrong things about Jesus and the Bible. Now, there's always people who believe wrong stuff about Jesus Christ, not because they have rejected the truth, but because they've never heard the truth. People who have never heard the truth are one thing. People who know and have been told the truth and willfully reject it, those are apostates. Apostates have made a willful rejection of truth. There are some Bible verses that cause people like me to really question whether an apostate can ever be saved from their sin due to their willful rejection. Now, as we walk through 2 Peter 2, we're going to find key Bible truths which are denied by false teachers, these apostates. If you've got something there handy to jot these notes down, jot down five truths which are denied by apostates, these false teachers. You ready? Number one is this. They deny the personal deity of Jesus Christ. This is based upon verse one here. Now, please notice that the false teachers here are bringing in damnable heresies. What these guys are teaching others are things that bring in destruction and damnation to the souls of those who listen and believe them. Verse one says they deny the Lord. What they are denying is both that Jesus is their Lord or their ruler, but they're also denying the why he ought to be their Lord. They're denying the Godness of Jesus Christ, that he was God incarnate. That's truth number one. Truth number two they deny is the atonement of Jesus Christ, still based here about on verse one. These false teachers are not necessarily denying that Jesus died on a cross. What they are denying is that Jesus' death was a sin-paying death. They deny the need for a blood atonement to deal with their own sinfulness and the sinfulness of other people. That's truth number two. Truth number one, they deny the deity of Jesus. Truth number two, they deny the atonement of Jesus. Third thing is they deny biblical creation. Biblical creation. This we're going to find when we get to chapter three, verses five and six. Now, these apostates are willingly ignorant of or willfully ignore the story, the truth found in Genesis chapters one and two. That's the account of how this physical world came into existence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In our day, these kind of teachers believe science over scripture. They believe in evolution over biblical creation. A fourth thing that they deny is false teachers deny the Genesis flood account. 
Again, you're going to find this in chapter 3 of 2 Peter, verses 6 and 7. For centuries, my friend, for centuries, religious folk have denied two things about the Noahic flood. Number one, they have denied that it was a worldwide flood flood. It was just a local thing. They don't deny that a flood happened, but it was a local flood. But the second part of the Noah story that they deny is that they deny that the flood was done to judge sinners. These apostates, these false religious teachers do not believe, do not teach that God is a God of wrath against sin and sinners. When the Psalms say that God is angry with sinners every day, God means what he says. People need to be saved because God is angry with sinners. Does God hate sin? Yes. Is God angry with the people who do the sin? Yes, he is. Both are very clearly, bluntly stated in the word of God. This brings me to the fifth thing of a truth that these apostates deny. These false teachers deny a coming future judgment by God upon all who reject Jesus as Savior. This is found in chapter 3 and verse 7. Over in chapter 3 of 2 Peter, these false teachers, in an almost mocking tone, say something like this. Where Is the promised coming of God that you Bible-believing people keep talking about? You've been telling us decade after decade, century after century, that Jesus is going to come again and judge sinners. So where in the world is he? It's been an awful long time. Well, sometime you go to 2 Peter chapter 3 and read the answer to this mocking statement. It's found in the ninth verse of chapter 3. The ninth verse says, in essence, this, God is not slack or God is not slow concerning his promise to return, as some men count or consider slackness. But God is long-suffering, patient toward us. God is not willing, God is not desirous that any person should perish into hell, but God desires that all people would be saved. Now, that's what the ninth verse says. That's the heartbeat of God. Does God want people to go to hell? The answer is no. Has God a heartbeat that people be saved? Yes. And so God is postponing, to put it one way, postponing his return so that time could be given that lost people hear and respond to Jesus as their Savior. Don't tell me, listener friend, have you personally turned away from your sinful life and run to Jesus to save you from your sin? Have you been pushing the limits of God's tenderness, God's patience by postponing being saved, even though time after time after time, the Spirit of God had brought conviction about on your heart about the need to be saved? The holy, righteous God of creation loves you, friend. He has provided salvation, but only through his Son and his shed blood. When will you receive him? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.